this is something I'm thinking about doing this as a segment where we go back in time because this article is from 2008. It says Obama, and this this article I like to dedicate it to Felipe, the Obama lover of the group. <laughs> so Obama looks to harness the grassroots support, right? This is from NPR in 2008, November 12, 2008. So he's not even in office uh, just yet, right? And basically the, what I want to point out about it, of course, Obama looks to harness grassroots support. That's an oxymoron. Like we know this now in 2020. Then uh, I'll read this. When Obama delivered his election victory speech in Chicago, he thanked his wife, his campaign manager, and his strategists. Then he thanked his volunteers, the army of political foot soldiers who donated money and knocked on doors. Obama took the foundation that Dean himself dug in 2004, the small donor, the small dollar internet fundraising and the DNC's 50 state strategy and erected a powerful political infrastructure. The numbers of I pop in 10 million names on an email list, 3.1 million donors, but most importantly, number of all may be the 10 of thousands of what the campaign called super volunteers, people who worked sometimes 40 to 50 hours a week for Obama. And this is the last thing I'm going to say here. I think in the same way, these incredible volunteers that we had carried his message throughout the campaign, talking to their neighbors about why he was the right candidate to bring the change that we need. I, I can see them in a similar way, explaining health care proposal, explaining whatever issues it is. And it's the last sentence. And as soon as they are doing explaining Obama's plans to their neighbors, the president-elect can skirt that so-called media filter and urge them through text messages, emails, and video links to in inundate their Congress members with expressions of support for his agenda, like Medicare for all, or like the public option. Oh, excuse me. He did not do that. <laughs> Felipe. He could have. He could have. Um. I do want to say that Obama never ran on the public option or Medicare for all, not excusing it, just saying that. Um, besides that, outside of that, Barack Obama had the most successful grassroots campaign in history until that point. That's and wasted it. And then wasted it. No, he totally did. He never had a supermajority quite like you guys always like to say. Which he did, he did he have. Was always what about, are you talking he was, about? He was, he he was he a senator off. Did. No, he get that. Come on, man. He was a senator off. He had a supermajority for two years. As President or yeah. uh, Barack Obama did call campaign on the public option. So yeah, I, I believe so. I want to thank oh, you for false. the fact check. We got receipts. Oh, receipts. Felipe, hey, thank receipts. you. Pull them up. Pull them up. Felipe, thank you. President Barack words. Obama promoted the idea of the public option receipts. while running for election. Two thousand eight. He got receipts. He got receipts. <laughs> option. Felipe, just take you out. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. He never he said did. the words public option. I've used this in an argument before. Um, you lost that argument. You lost our no, actually. <laughs> Obama ran on the public option. Yeah, he did. Come on, man. Yeah, Obama, it was Obama a renews public call. option. July 2016, Obama renews call for a public option in quotes in federal health law. All right. Oh, wait, well, well, you know, well, maybe he was calling for it before he ran. So July. This is in 2016, November. Or 2016 is, oh, that's more recent. So we got to go back further. Hey, well, uh, well, <laughs> let me, let me. Uh, uh, in 2006. Uh, uh, yeah, Felipe, let me bring up this point real quick, guys, because recently Barack Obama talked about how um, if he had a, a more Democrats in the Senate and he didn't have as much Republican opposition, he could have got more things passed. Right. That's what he said. But as we mm -hmm. see, he didn't even try to galvanize his uh, super volunteers to contact congressmen. And I already told in the past ep uh, video how he went to Dennis Kucinich and convinced him to vote for a more moderate version of health care than to go to Joe Lieberman. He didn't go to Joe Lieberman to force him to at least accept a public option. One other thing I'll add, too, is that like that article talks about how he kind of skirted the, um, you know, the, the media. And I, I don't know that he really did that, per se, but he did revolutionize the way candidates use social media specifically mm -hmm. to reach individual voters, you know, to reach them directly. Yeah. And... You know, one thing that we've seen with AOC is that she has taken that formula and, I mean, put it on steroids. So she really, you know, yeah. she, I guess she learned from that. Well, even better has... than AOC is Trump, to be honest. Oh, yeah, that's I true. Mean, that's true. Uh, 
No, he's right. I mean, the way he uses Twitter, you know, he's right. that's that's his oh. megaphone. Yeah, yeah, but he only used Twitter. But like you know, but to easy point, you know, he's uh, AOC is going on Instagram Live. You know, she's going to uh, what was that game on Twitch? You know, so she she's Twitch doing Among Us. So she's getting to like you know, Trump is Twitter. Like Trump is just like you know, he tweet whatever hours you know his followers are following him, and you know. And that's where he gets everything to social media for himself. But, you know, what he's just trying to get, like, Elsie's, like, you know, how many young voters she registered by just going through those platforms? You know, a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, she would answer questions, like, right? And, like, when she goes mm-hmm. on Instagram Live, you know, people will ask her questions and and she will, like, answer them. Like, people, you know, she put questions on her story. And then she, you know, so she's reaching that level. So Trump is just putting every lie that he could put on the tweet. But uh, I think, you know, AOC is doing the connection. Like, you know, I think people feel that she's actually, you know, genuine and like someone that they could ask a question and she may respond to them. And the thing is, too, like how much how much uh, attention does Trump really get on Twitter if he's not also magnified by the media? You know, because he gets both. He, He puts something on Twitter and then all of the media talks about it for a week. You know, so that that definitely helps him. If he if he, if he didn't have that. Would people really be paying attention to all his tweets? Which is why I, always, I think Gabe and I always have this discussion with you, and you never want to give him credit when we tell him that he's a marketing. Like he's like he knows how to market this stuff. Like anytime that anything's happening, he just puts a tweet, and everything in the back end is happening. But the media is talking about his tweet, and you never have given him credit for that. And Gabe and I always said like he knows what he's doing. I, I think he's just a moron, yeah. and and I think I think he's just loud, just and people, of yeah, yeah. I'm I not, think, I'm not yeah, sure it's exactly all marketing. It. I'm with Izzy more on this one because even though he does use social, you know, his Twitter, you know, to reach his followers, and he's he has his, you know, unfiltered version of himself out there. Uh, I don't think it's so much marketing genius the way he's covering more than. You know, it's like if it bleeds, it leads. You know, everybody likes watching a train wreck. That's why he even got popular in the first place. Mm-hmm. People thought, oh, he's not going to win. But let's put everything, you know, every single word he says on TV because it's good for ratings. And little did they know that it just got him all popular and he ended up winning. So Trump right now. knows how to play the narrative and you guys don't want to give him credit. Something happened with Russia. Trump goes talk about the economy or talk about Hillary or somebody and the media talks about it for a week. Yeah, but it's, the, but, it's the, but it's the way that they cover it because they just give them the way the media is right now. They don't really there to really fact check him the way he should be or, you know, they just they do everything as a he said, she said. So they just say, well, Trump said this. What do you think about that? You know, that that's, that doesn't help anybody. You know, journalism. You know, when it comes to the mainstream media, it's dead. They're not. They don't inform anybody. They just. They just parroting whatever Trump says, mm-hmm. and then put some talking heads in there to snipe back and forth about it. But they're not really analyzing. They're not saying whether what he's saying is true or false or helpful. You know, now that they want Biden to win, they're lit. You know, some of those. You know, MSNBC is is, is against them like that or whatever. But, but they really never. You know, they're not really journalists. You know, they they just establishing people. Watch when Biden comes in, they're going to treat Biden the same way. They're just going to pair whatever him and the industrial Mm -hmm. uh, military complex says. Now, I disagree with you, Carlito. I think the mainstream media like CNN, MSNBC, they have been calling him out for his lies, especially these debates. They've had a guy that specializes in fact checking Trump on CNN. I don't know his name right now. But when is this? This is this is now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I agree with you with that. Before, like with Obama. Obama could say plenty of lies and they would not call him out. I I agree with you that when they when Biden well, comes, I don't in, know about that because Obama wasn't Obama yeah. wasn't lying like Trump or any. Oh no close. no no no! Of course not. You of know, course not. You know. He wasn't. And they, I mean, I, so yeah. matter of fact, Obama wasn't. I mean, I, I can't even recall right now a big lie that Obama did or anything. Yeah yeah. Nah, I, right I agree with you. Um, but I'm talking about maybe his feelings. Maybe he, they didn't call out his feelings right. as much. You know what I'm saying? They would so, not challenge so, him. They, they would not challenge him. And Joe Biden, we, they're going to do the same thing. Go ahead, John. But we're missing the point, right? The point was about the marketing part of things, right? Like, it doesn't matter about journalism, what they're talking, like, but Trump, anytime there's something happening big, Trump will send out a tweet absolutely the opposite of stuff because he knows the media is going to talk about that specific tweet and not talk about the problem. So 
he is a marketing like he knows that that works and he knows that the media is going to eat it alive so right but that's the, because the the main, but that's because the media is not doing a good job all right, the way me, they cover him water, water is mm. wet yeah <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> all right let me She's button saying, up let I me agree. button up this conversation let me I button up this conversation is by exploiting exploiting uh you know the idiots in the media i guess all right let me button up this conversation okay. we can move on to the next topic but i know my man gabe sent this out in the chat he said this to me and says in a political article, Obama tries to distance himself from the public option, and it says, I didn't campaign on the public option. This is what Obama tried to say, but the article says, but this is not true. In a campaign position paper on health care, Obama mentions the public plan eight Receipts. times. Eight times. <laughs> 